Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Masha Travels. Today we are leaving Shani Lofa and we'll be going towards Vera Shahar. Vera Shahar is a town serving a cotton growing area of Shani Lofa province in the southeastern Turkey, which is 93 kilometers east of the city of Shani Lofa and 53 kilometers northwest at the Syrian border. It is one of the oldest districts of Shani Lofa. The E90 highway, known as the historic Silk Road, passes through the district center. The road also connects Shani Lofa province to Iraq. The reason we are visiting Vera Shahar is to visit the Turbises of two prophets, Prophet Ayyub salam and Hazrat Ilyas salam. So come along, let's show you around Vera Shahar and I will take you to do the ziyarats of the both covers. We're going to Vera Shahar, 94 kilometers, one hour and six minutes. Assalamu alaikum and good morning from Viran Shahar. Viran Shahar is on the way to Mardin friend. We are traveling from Shanil Urfa. We are here to see some muqams, turbises of some peghambars, which is the first one is Hazrat Ayyub alayhi salam and then Hazrat Ilyas alayhi salam. Then we see the, the Shifa water here. All Sabir Tashi. We... Hazrat Ayyub peghambar jo the, unko Sabir bhi kaha jata. We call him Sabir because of his uh, sabr when he was actually ill for seven years and he stayed in a cave. This cave I showed you, Ashanil Urfa as well. And let's see what of his um, main things we can find here. We do know that his turbisi is here, which is his kabar. So let's go and explore the area. Sabir the Yari Ayub Nabi is the city of Hazrat Ayub Peghambar because like we know that Allah Ta'ala granted him with a lot of wealth and offsprings but Allah Ta'ala took all that of that off him at one point in life and he was ill because he, he said that it is all from Allah and Allah has given me so much in life and I should have sabr on this. That's why he's also called Sabir. Hazrat Ayyub Peghambar is Sabir. So let's go and see his turbisi. There is a well. I'm not quite sure what that well is. Because we know the authenticity of these places is not there. Like we do not know for 100% sure if these places are exactly here but as they have been discovered through dreams or what do we call it um ilham uh, or they used to have these places in dreams what well, i know of that's how these things places were discovered but i do not know exactly how this one was discovered but there is a zat ayub nabi's turbisi let's go and pray our fatiha in there
there's also this uh, graveyard around the maqam itself blessed are these people who are buried next to a Ambari sabir there's a little mosque shifasu or sabir tashi hazrat ayat ayat so they are on this side Like I said about the authenticity of these places, there are a few different riwayats about uh, the Turbesi of uh, Hazrat Ayyub, also about his uh, uh, Shifa uh, well. So it's no harm in believing all of these places because it could be any one of these. So let's go, that's the Shifa Su, the Shifa water of Ayyub Pagambar. Look at this place, how they've made it. Wherever the well is, but they've made this more accessible for people nowadays. They've made it in these tabs. It's so hot. I'm putting it all on my head as well, you know. Ooh. Tell it. Pani pili amne. अब देखते हैं आगे क्या है। What is that? साबिर ताशी In English up on the side. Is it? But it's a gate there. So there is this healing stone. We don't know what this stone is for. Look at how they've made it. So it's easier accessible for people who are walking as well. There it is, a bit further down. That's Hazrat Elias Pegambar Sturbisi. Hazrat Ilyas was a descendant of Prophet Harun alayhi salam. Ilyas, peace be upon him, was sent to the people of Balak, west of Damascus. He was sent to lead the Israelites towards Tawheed and to direct them to the truth. He's been also mentioned in the Quran three times, once in Surah Al-Anam and twice in Surah Al-Safat. His people did not listen to him. They not only refused to believe in him, but also opposed him. So he had to flee from them. He returned only after the king died and another had taken over. He presented his religion to the new king too. A large number of his subjects became believers, but the king had them all killed. There are so many Israel stories about him, but they are all inauthentic and far-fetched. Some of them we do not reject or accept though on the face of it they are untainable. According to Israelites, he is still alive. According to the Muslims, he is Thank not. Thank you very much for watching and do not forget to subscribe for more from Southeast Turkey and Uzbekistan coming soon.